morning, everybody. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. Give everybody a chance to log on. If you did not catch the um the traveling, what it was, real life travel situations last night with Kristen Singleton, uh, with travel, no, with Blitch Travel by Kristen. Um, that's my aunt. And she is a travel agent and she travels. She doesn't just do cruises or Disney. Um, she literally travels across the world. And she can help you if you want to book a trip and your budget to be able to travel, travel all over the world. She'll be glad to assist you. Um, but that should be on Blitz Travel by Kristen. And then I posted it in the group last night. So if you're going to be traveling with sex toys, make sure you check that video out. I'm giving everybody a chance to log on. I hope y'all doing well today. Hope y'all doing well. I'm doing great myself. I ain't even get up and do no makeup today. I got a party at the store tonight. So I normally, if, and when y'all get to know me, you're going to know if I got a party tonight, I ain't about to be beat all day. I'm just going to be beat tonight. I ain't about to be made up all day. So um, today we're going to be talking about orgasm versus ejaculation and i wanted to talk about that before i talk about the fourth orgasm which is going to be g-spot and we're going to actually talk about that on monday um tomorrow we'll do a review for all of the people who are playing catch up um but today we're going to be talking about orgasm versus ejaculation and we're going to talk about the difference between the two because a lot of times people feel like if they don't ejaculate, they didn't have an orgasm and that's not true. So we're going to talk about that because those are two totally, two, two totally different things. Orgasm and ejaculation are two different things. A lot of times the reason we feel like if we don't ejaculate, we didn't have an orgasm is because we're comparing ourselves to men. Because when men have an orgasm, the end result is ejaculation. Sometimes. But we're going we gonna to talk about what a dry orgasm is because some men actually have an orgasm and they don't ejaculate. That's called a dry orgasm. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the people who actually cannot have an orgasm, meaning that no matter how much you stimulate them, medically they cannot have an orgasm. Meaning they always feel like they're getting right there to that point and then nothing happens. And they feel like, they, I felt like it was about to happen. I felt like it was about to happen, but it just never happened. We're going to talk about that because that's a, that's an actual medical term. Um, and we're going to talk about that. So, thank you, honey. I, I have to say that because sometimes people think that, um, girl, they think you robots. And you got to get up every day and do the whole, you know. I get up every day and I say, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to look decent today. I'm going to comb my hair, wash my face, and do all this and that the other. But sometimes people have you up to an expectation. Baby, you have no idea. Let's see. So, we talked about the clitoris. We talked about a clitoral orgasm. We talked about a deep orgasm. And then we have talked about blended orgasms. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between ejaculation and an orgasm. So this live is not going to be really, really long, okay? All right. So basically, ejaculation is the evidence. That's it. It's, it's, the, 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 it's when our body releases. But I want to give you the medical term for ejaculation. Let's see. Give y'all a chance to get on. Let's see, ejaculation definition. Okay, so medically, ejaculation is a discharge that 
The medical definition is a discharge. To eject from a living body, eject semen in orgasm, discharge. That's what ejaculation is. Okay? So, it's a lot of times as women, and I want to talk about this because it's a lot of times as women, we have an orgasm, but we may not necessarily have the discharge from it. Whereas with men, most times, unless there's something medical going on, they have the orgasm and they have the, the semen to show the proof of it. That's their discharge. We don't discharge semen, okay? But we do discharge fluid, okay? So yes, you can have one without the other. We are women, we can have multiple orgasms back to back to back to back to back. And yet, there's no discharge of fluid. But it did not mean that we did not get excited. It, did, it does not mean that pleasure did not happen. It's just that we have put the word orgasm in such a small box. As humans, we have done that. And a lot of times people say, well, did you come? Did you have an orgasm? And we'll be like, well, it felt good and I enjoyed it. But I don't know. No, we have to be specific. Well, it felt good and I enjoyed it, but I did not have a clitoral orgasm. Well, it felt good and I enjoyed it, but... I didn't have a clitoral orgasm or I didn't have a deep orgasm. It felt good and I enjoyed it, but you made me have a clitoral orgasm and I was really trying to go for that deep orgasm. Oh yes, it felt amazing and I enjoyed it and I even had a blended orgasm from it. This is how we have to talk so that we can explain to the people that we have having sex with exactly what's going on with our bodies because all they know is they get excited, they come, they ejaculate. Men will pull out and actually look, they will be looking for us to have the same body response as they have. And you have to educate them and you have to tell them, sweetheart, I had an orgasm. I experienced pleasure. I climaxed. I just didn't have a clitoral orgasm. I didn't have, in other words, I received pleasure. Because a lot of times we have sex and it feels good to us, but we just don't have the orgasm or we just don't ejaculate in the process. If you have any questions, please start sending them so when I go back through, I can read them. Make sure you send your questions. All right, so now we're gonna talk about It's called an anorgasmia. I like to let the um I, I like to let Google say it because I will fuck a word up. I'm gonna turn it up because I, I wanna hear I wanna hear Google say it. Just had it to where it will say this damn word. This is a sexual dysfunction, which a person cannot achieve an orgasm. So, let me go back to Google. Cause y'all, y'all will go to Google just so Google can say the word for you. I do it all the time. Anorgasmia. Anorgasmia. Did y'all hear? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her say it again. Anorgasmia. Anorgasmia is when you cannot reach an orgasm. Okay, or you have a difficult time reaching an orgasm through sexual stimulation. That means I can stimulate you all day long, all night long, and you and it's not gonna happen for you. Okay, so let me talk about that because I have, and I'm gonna actually post this up in the group. Sometimes it's a medical condition. Um, sometimes we are unaware of our anatomy and how our body is made up and, and you're not being stimulated pro or properly. And sometimes um, when people have experienced sexual assault, sexual abuse, 
sometimes it's a psychological condition, meaning that you have literally shut this part of your mind down. Okay? So, um, when it's a medical condition, sometimes it happens because you went through menopause and they tried to do some type of surgery on you. Sometimes it happens natural. But most times when you experience this, it's because you had some type of surgery and one of the results of the surgery was you lost your ability to have an orgasm. Sometimes you may be a diabetic, and I've seen this so many times, especially in diabetics, the medication that they have you on, you cannot orgasm at all. I remember when I was taking metformin, when I was really, really, really heavy, I was like 350 pounds. This was way before I had the sleeve surgery. If those of y'all that don't know, I had the weight loss surgery and I lost like 120, 130 pounds. I gained about, I can definitely say I gained about 25 of it back. You know, your body does that. It loses a lot. Then it gets to the point where you get to your, what your weight is going to actually be and you just have to work to maintain it. So I'm good where I'm at. But anyway, long story short, when I was taking the metformin for the, um, the they say the pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, I lost my ability to be able to have an orgasm. I would get right there, but I could not have an orgasm. So I know for a fact, when you're dealing with people that's dealing with diabetes, a lot of times they cannot have an orgasm. Now, with the people that um, basically they're unaware of their body and their genitalia and they, they can't make themselves orgasm, those are some of the people that can't experience it. All you got to do is get knowledge about your body and then it can start happening for you. My people that have uh, mental, psychological issues going on and you basically have been uh, assaulted or raped or, you know, just... You have a lot of stuff going on that, that happened in your past that, that made you shit everything down. You got to go to therapy, okay? So that, they, so that they can help you work through all of that, all right? So... Today, for those of y'all that are just getting on, we are talking about orgasm versus ejaculation, okay? So, we're talking about sexual dysfunction today, all right? A sexual issue, because people actually come in the store and they actually have sexual issues. The sexual issue that we're talking about today, I'm going to get her to say it again. Anorgasmia. Anorgasmia, okay? Now, a lot of times you'll see dry orgasm. Now, anorgasmia is when... They cannot experience an orgasm. Dry orgasm is when you can actually have an orgasm, but your body cannot produce any fluid. It cannot ejaculate in any type of way. I see a lot of men that have prostate surgery. They experience that, what's called a dry orgasm, meaning that they get the sensation and it feels good, but they cannot actually produce semen, okay? Sometimes women... What we have is more of a dry orgasm, meaning that we get the pleasure, we get the, the sensation, and oh yeah, it felt good, but then, guess what? There's no evidence of it. We didn't experience any discharge, okay? So, your notes for today is the difference between an orgasm versus ejaculation. We have the definition for orgasm, we have the definition for ejaculation, okay? We need to know what a dry orgasm is. And we need to know what anorgasmia is. Anorgasmia. Those are your four terms. Anorgasmia, a dry orgasm, ejaculation, and a actual, the, word, the term for actual orgasm. Okay? Let's see. Let me go back to the um, live so I can see what question you going to be in. Hold on. Good. My live is always a few minutes behind. Questions. Okay, what can diabetics do to correct the problem? Um, most times if you are type 2 diabetes, you can reverse it. When I lost the weight, my body reversed everything. Let me tell you something. And the reason I had made the choice to have the weight loss surgery was because I was on my way to being a diabetic. My blood pressure was elevated. I was having thyroid problems. My cycles were irregular. I was starting to have a lot of medical issues all because I was overweight. Within the first three months of my weight loss surgery, where I had lost like 40, 50 pounds within the first three months, everything, my body starts to reverse itself. Um, 
no matter how much I used to go get pedicures, my feet will be dry and hard. Guess what? My feet are soft, and I, I don't even have to go and get a pedicure anymore. M my skin stopped flaking. Uh, I, I stopped having bad dandruff and all kinds of stuff. So I just made a decision for myself to go that route to lose weight. But a lot of times when you're type 2 diabetes, it's because you have to lose weight. So once you can reverse it, then you don't have to take the medicine anymore, which basically cures the problem of you not being able to have an orgasm. Let's see. Okay. Having a C-section. Um, I've had two types of birth. My two first births were vaginal birth. My last birth was a um, emergency C-section. I will have to do further research because I've never seen what having a C-section will cause you not to be able to have an orgasm anymore unless there was some type of, um, sometimes, now, I've heard of it happening during vaginal birth, but you asked specifically about a C-section not being able to have orgasms. Um, I have to do further research on that. Now, I know when people have vaginal births and they experience a lot of tearing or doctors have to use forceps and all of that kind of stuff, it can really tear down your lady parts down there. Like, it can really affect you being able to have an orgasm. It can affect um, the way you get aroused and all of that. But that that's through vaginal births where you can get just toe down down there like that. I haven't um, seen any research that says anything about having a C-section and it um, affects you having an orgasm. So, I will do the research on it. I have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of books. Um, so, I will dig. Trust me, I will dig until I find it. Because that's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy doing the research. That's why I have been um, thinking. I have a master's degree already. And I have been like really, really thinking. And I think maybe once my baby get into high school, I may go back to work on my PhD in this industry. But um, because I love doing the research. I love research. And I don't mind writing to get, get the publishing and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, any other questions before we end this live? Any other questions? So, so far, okay, quick quiz about how many nerves are in the clitoris. Quick quiz about how many nerves are in the, quick to in the clitoris. Answer that for me. About how many nerves? If you can't answer these questions, you need to go back and look at the lives. You need to go back. If you ever miss a live, it's in the announcements. Yes, hysterectomies can definitely affect your ability to orgasm. Yes, they can. Some ladies, they experience where they become super wet, super hot, super horny. Then I have some ladies where it just drains their libido and they can't, they don't experience anything anymore. Good job, good job, good job, good job. When you have two orgasms at one time, what is that called? Two different types of orgasms at one time, what is that called? Good job. Y'all on it. Y'all on it this morning. Miss Dawson, when you say older women, what do you mean? What is good for older women? Older women that are trying to experience an orgasm that hadn't experienced an orgasm before. Older women that used to be able to experience an orgasm and their body went through the change and they're not producing a libido in their body anymore. I need you to be a little bit more specific for me. When you say what's good for older women, I, I need... I need you to probably inbox me and go into a little detail about what you mean by older women. So if you can inbox me, that's great. Okay, no ma'am, Kimberly Flowers is not multiple orgasm. When you're experiencing two different orgasms at the same time, it's called a blended orgasm. When you're experiencing multiple orgasms, that means that you're, you're multi-orgasmic. You're experiencing them back to back to back to back. A lot of times it's the same orgasm that you're experiencing back to back. But when you're experiencing a blended orgasm, that means you're experiencing two different types at one time. On Monday, we're going to be talking about the G-spot. Now, I'm going to be talking about the G-spot orgasm, but if you want to go to the class and learn how to squirt, you got to go download my video, okay? The video is only $19.99. You'll have it forever. You'll be able to go back and watch it with your man if you want to watch it so that he can learn the techniques 
to make you squirt. The reason why you have to watch the video is because if I get on here and I start that hardcore teaching like that with my half a woman and I start showing you what to do inside of her pussy, the video going to get flagged. So I cannot bring my big pussy and sit it out here on the table and actually go in and try to teach. I tried. So with that being said, you have, and, and YouTube won't let me um post it either because they will flag it. So you have to actually go and pay to download that video. It's only $19.99. So if you go to my website, www.dppgstore.com, as soon as you click on it, the very first thing you're going to see is download how to squirt. And the very next thing you're going to see after that is the whole bags. I have five whole bags left. Okay. We have five whole bags left. If you want one, go to the website. When I get off this live, I'm going to the post office to ship off the ones that was ordered yesterday. Uh, with that being said, if you miss the lives, go to the announcements. I understand that everybody have to work. I understand that life is happening. And a lot of times y'all have shit going on at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's why I post them in the announcements. You will always have, you will always be able to go back to the lives. Another thing, if you report somebody comment on accident, you will be removed from the group. You can inbox me and explain it, that it was an accident. You didn't mean to do it. I completely understand, but the rules are the rules. I'm not letting you back up in here, okay? You got to be more careful with your phones, okay? I do not play about reporting content because I don't have all day to try to sift through what you meant and what you didn't mean and all of that kind of stuff. When Facebook notified me that you reported a comment, then I just go and inbox you the comment that you reported and the message that Facebook sent me. Let you know we enjoyed having you in the group, but it's not working out. Enjoy the rest of your time. I hope you come and shop with me at the PPG store in the future. I hope that you getting kicked out the group don't create no bad blood. If it do, then oh well, you wasn't my customer anyway. And I keep it pushing and you got to do the same. All right. So with that being said, this concludes Sex Talk with Sharonda. I will be here until 4 o'clock today. I will be working until 4 because I have to come back and actually host a party here tonight. I want to make sure I answered all of the questions. The only questions I had was about C-section and diabetic. I didn't have anything else and y'all were responding and a lot of y'all letting me know that y'all were late. Okay. So, okay, Ms. Dawson, basically saying your body went through a change. I understand it. Send me a message in my inbox. I can go into, I, we can get into a little more detail. Because I want to give you the best information possible. When I answer your questions, I really try to give you the best information possible. Y'all be blessed.